Happy New Year. It's a new year. It's 2023. Uh, I can't wait until you guys go to school next week and start writing 2022 and then like, oh, junk, that's not, that's not the year. That happened to me all the time. Guys, I'm excited today uh, because we get to start a new sermon series called Breaking Cycles. If you don't know who I am, my name is Nick. I have the luxury of preaching to you guys every Friday. And I'm really stoked because this sermon, it wasn't something that I actually had thought of. I, I, before the break, I was asking some of my leaders, man, like, what are some topics that you guys need to discuss. And one of them came up as being burnt up, or being burnt up, burnt out, geez, burnt out. And so I thought, man, what if I could combine a sermon series that we talk about certain topics? And, and today we have the amazing opportunity to launch this series. And so what the series really is doing is it's looking at scripture and it's really trying to understand how we break certain cycles. Break the cycles of being burnt out, break the cycle of being disobedient, break the cycle of being discontent. And it's really just trying to start off this year right. Quick show of hands, how many of you guys made New Year's resolutions or New Year's goals? Raise them, it's all right, it's all right. Bro, don't, don't, don't be shy. More than half of you guys made some goals. But sadly, I'm going to be very honest, majority of you will never see those goals past like February. And that's just the truth. We are so quick to break cycles and so, so quick to break goals. And yet some of our goals probably weren't even spiritual goals. How many of you guys decided uh, you wanted to lose weight this year? Raise your hand. I know I did. I know me and my wife were like, yo, we got to hit the gym. How many of you were, had anything to do with school? Raise your hand. All right, what about sports? Raise your hand. Uh, family? Raise your hand. What about work? Anybody was like, yo, I just need to find a job? None of you? None of you were like, yo, I, I don't care about finding a job. It's all right. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Guys, we're so quick to break certain cycles. And, and for this reason, this sermon series, it might be a reminder for some of you. But it, but it might be a preventative measure or a plan in case some of you get too close to these topics. It might be to that point where you just create a plan where you don't get burnt out. Where, where you, you create a plan where you aren't becoming discontent. Or you create a plan that you're not being disobedient. And so today, if I'm talking to any one of you guys, I want you guys to know this. We've all been in these circumstances. We've all been in these areas and so it's totally okay if you are near this, if you are getting to that point, or if you've been at that point. Today we get to talk about being burnt out. Does anybody know what that even means? Raise your hand. Anybody know what burnt out means? What does it mean? No? You don't know? You're just like, yeah, that was, but nah, never mind. Anybody know what it means? Yeah? Exhausted? All right. Tired of doing the same thing? Okay. Anybody else? I mean, we have an idea of what being burnt out is, right? But, but let me tell you something. Being burnt out, it's a combination of things. See, stress is really the foundation of being burnt out. When we're overly stressed. But it's really a combination of being overly stressed emotionally, physically, mentally, and also spiritually. When we get burnt out, it's us crashing and burning. It's us not being able to take any more. And we've allowed the stress of our life to really push us to our limits. See, in order to reach full burnout, we need to allow ourselves to reach stress levels that are so high that we can no longer deal with them. And so, therefore, we break down in every one of these areas. We can break down emotionally by feeling numb. We can break down physically by, by fatigue and being tired. We can break down mentally by just being checked out, not wanting to deal with anything. We can break down spiritually by feeling distant from God. And these things are actually what happened to most of us. And so whether you, you've reached one of them, whether you've never reached any of them, or whether you've reached all of these at this point in time, can I say that God has a practical word for us today? God is willing and wanting to speak into your life. He wants to make sure that you don't get burned out. 
He wants to see you succeed. Today we're going to be covering 1 Kings chapter 9. 1 Kings chapter 9. So if you have your Bibles, notebooks, and pens, I encourage you, whip them out, take notes. If this isn't, you're not dealing with being burnt out today, I promise you at some point in your life, you might. So taking these notes, man, they're going to help you either today or in the future. The sermon of my title is being burnt out. So quick context, we're covering this man, this prophet named Elijah. Now Elijah, he's one of the greatest prophets of the Hebrew, Hebrewites, of the Israelites. He's a miracle worker, man. And really, he's one of two prophets who appear with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. See, most of Elijah's story is really told in 1 Kings chapter 17 through 19 and 2 Kings chapter 1 through 2. And man, Elijah is one of those prophets that he's been there, he's done that, he's done amazing things for the name or for the kingdom of God. He causes rain to cease for Israel for three and a half years. He multiplies a widow's grain and oil. He he raises that same widow's son from the dead. He calls fire from heaven. And then to top it off, he then allows rain uh, to fall after a three and a half year drought. He has been there. He has done that. He's done amazing things for the kingdom of God. And so Elijah, he was no stranger to God's blessings. He was no stranger to the way he, God worked, the miracles that, that God provided. Elijah knew how God operated. Elijah knew what God was capable of. He was a prophet of God. Right before we read this, Elijah's on this all-time high. Man, he, he gets up, he starts competing with with a bunch of other false prophets. And he says, man, I'm going to put them up to a competition. Let's see which God is real. We're going to do a burnt offering. And whoever can light this burnt offering on fire, whosoever God can do that, that is the one true God. And as we know in chapter, uh, chapter 17, God, Yahweh, is the one who wins this test. Right after this, Elijah allows the rain to fall back, and he, he, he's on an all-time high, miracle after miracle after miracle. Elijah's in it, man. But then we turn over to 1 Kings chapter 19, and it says this. When Ahab got home, he told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, including the way that he killed all the prophets of Baal. And so Jezebel sent this message to Elijah. May the gods strike me and even kill me if this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you have killed them, the prophets. Elijah was afraid and he fled for his life. He went to Bathsheba, a town of Judah, and he left his servant there. Then he went alone into the wilderness traveling all day. And finally, he sat down under a solitary broom tree, and he prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors who have already died. Let's pray. Father, I just pray that you speak through me. Lord, that anybody listening online or in person, whoever's watching it today, tomorrow, next month, next year, Father, Lord, is impacted by your word. And Lord, that as we open up your scriptures, as we read your scriptures, Lord, that that we can take something with us when we get home. Lord, that whoever entered here today, that they don't leave unchanged, but rather they leave radically on fire for you. Lord, I thank you for everything you've done, including this opportunity to speak your word. And so, Lord, today, I just praise you and I honor you. And I pray that you, all those walls that are built up, Lord, that they come crumbling down and that you pierce those hearts that need to be pierced. I thank you for everything you do. It's in your son's name we pray. Jesus Christ, amen. How many of you guys have iPhones? Don't, don't, okay. Wow, dude, that's a majority. How many of you guys have Androids? 
Oof. How many have no phones? It's all right. Don't worry. Cool. Yeah, there's like four of you. Bro, that's a, that's a wide margin. Did you know that the average screen time for teens is 7.5 hours a day? A day. That is almost as much as your parents work. That is 40 hours a week, not including Saturday and Sunday. Like, you stare at your phone just as much as your parents work. That is crazy to me. I was researching this, and I was like, oh, man, I'm trying to find, like, a cool analogy that kind of sticks. And I was like, oh, what about your iPhone? And I went back to it, and I was like, yo, 7.5 hours a day is wild. It's wild. It's literally a full-time job. Your full-time job is scrolling through Instagram, and you don't even get paid for it. That is insane. This message has nothing to do with that, but I was like, yo, that's crazy. How many of you know that at some point, though, you need to put your phone down? Yeah, right? Like, like at some point, you need to be like, all right, like, I got my family. I got my life. I got, like, my friends. I got something to do, so I got to get that phone. I got to put it in the back of my pocket. I got to put it on my desk. I got to put it in my book bag, whatever it is. Like, your phone needs rest, right? You need rest from your phone, right? Like, that is something that has to happen. In your life, you're going to need breaks, even from your phone. In your life, you need breaks from the severity of life. That's the truth. What's crazy, though, is that some of you guys, you whip out your iPhones as your break. Like, you you can't deal with the stressors of life, so you, you pick up your phone. You play video games on your phone. You want social for your phone. Like, you tune out with your phone. And that for you is rest. And that is crazy. But how many of you know that that's not true rest? That that, that can't be true rest in the eyes of God. Let's jump back over to 1 Kings chapter 19. It says this, 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 1 says this, when Ahab got home, he told just about everything Elijah had done, including the way that he killed all the prophets of Baal. So Jezebel sent this message, this death threat, this letter saying, dude, I am going to kill you. May my God strike me down by tomorrow at this exact time if I have not killed you first. This is a point of anger for Jezebel. Like she is beyond upset. She's beyond emotionally distressed. And so she sends this letter, a death threat over to Elijah. And Elijah's reaction was fear. Says this, Elijah was afraid and he fled for his life. Man, this is the same prophet who just went out and did all of these miracles for the kingdom of God. He's on an all-time high, miracle after miracle after miracle. I don't know about you, but I've never, I've never called fire down from heaven. And yet, Elijah just did this prior. He, j- he created a drought. He created all of these miracles, and yet here he's afraid for his life. It shows the humanity of Elijah. It shows that he is no different than you and I. And in his fear, he fled. He went to Bathsheba, a town in Judea, and he left his servant there. He decided, like, man, I'm so afraid. Like, it's better for you to stay away from me because they might kill me. Like, like let's split apart. They won't find us. It, it'll be harder for us. Whatever his thought process was, he decided that he'd rather be alone than with a friend. And then he went on alone into the wilderness. If you have your Bibles open, I want you to highlight alone. He went on alone into the wilderness. Traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. Man, this is a man who, who's afraid of so many different things. And I can tell you right now, he is physically, he is mentally, he is spiritually, he's checked out. He is so afraid and so stressed that he is beyond burned out. I don't know about you, but I don't really particularly like walking. 
Imagine walking all day. Imagine walking for hours. Imagine walking for eight hours, 12 hours, 16 hours. Scripture says, man, he walked all day, traveling all day, until he finally sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. I don't know about you, man, but I can tell you very personally, there's been a point in my life, a few actually, where I've been so burnt out, I have called for God for death. I've sat there and like, Lord, I just can't take this anymore. I'm so stressed. I'm so burdened. I can't help it. I just need, I need to go home. Send me home, God. Like, I just, I can't do this anymore. Some of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Elijah, man, he's sitting here like, bro, I have had enough. Scripture says, I have had enough. Take my life for I, I am no better than my ancestors who already died. I have done enough. I can't do any more. He's gone to the point where he can't do anything. He is beyond tired. He's, 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 he doesn't know what else to do except ask for death. See, Elijah, he unknowingly, he took some steps. He took some steps for burnout. I don't know if you caught this, but, but when Scripture says that he fled, you know what happened? Is that he fled from his issues. He fled from his problems. Instead of dealing with them, he decided to run away from them. Instead of dealing with them head on and asking God for help in that moment, he decided to flee out of fear. That's step number one for burnout. Now on top of that, he decided to go out it alone. He decided to rebuke all of his friends, his servant. He, de he decided to, to leave the community. He thought his problems were bigger than his friends, bigger than God, bigger than his community. And so he went at it alone. And then eventually the stress got to him physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. This man was checked out. Some of you guys here today, man, you guys are going through life, whatever is stressing you out, you guys are going through life at it alone. And instead of facing your issues, instead of facing your problems, man, you are running out of fear. You'd rather just, just act as if they don't exist. And God's saying, bro, that, that's not the way. You got to remember, Elijah was no stranger to how God worked. He was a prophet for God. He knew exactly how God worked. He knew exactly the miracles that God has done. He was no stranger. And it, he, fell, he still fell into this. Man, if there's a word of encouragement for there, I'm going to let you know. It doesn't matter if you're a pastor. It doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian. We all can get burned out. If we're not too careful, it can happen to all of us. It doesn't matter how strong you think you are with God or how close you are with God. If we're not too careful, it will happen to us all. But can I tell you something? Verse 5, it says this. Then he laid down and he slept under the broom tree. He was so emotionally drained. He was so physically tired. He was mentally wanting to die. He was spiritually disconnected to God's ability. And so all he could do was fall asleep. Have you ever been so stressed, you probably cried yourself to sleep? I have. I've been so drained that I have knocked out in my own tears. I've gone to points in my life where I'm just like, dude, I can't do this anymore. And I know some of you guys have too. If you haven't, man, I, I encourage you, 
take notes on this so that way you don't reach that point. And the truth is it's so easy to fall down this rabbit hole. And so Elijah, he sits there and says, man, I can't do this anymore. He's, he, he's crying out to God. And so he falls asleep alone in the wilderness. But as he was sleeping, it says, an angel touched him. An angel told him this, get up and eat. Wake up, eat. And so he looked around and there beside his head, he saw some break, bread baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And so he ate and he drank and he laid down again. When I first read this, honestly, I was like, bro, buddy was hangry. He was so exhausted. All he needed was some food and water and some sleep. All he needed was a moment to just rest his head, to eat some good food, to drink some water, to take a chill pill. But then it goes on, he, he rested. And it said this, then the angel in verse 7, then the angel of the Lord came to him again and touched him and said, get up and eat some more or the journey ahead will be too much for you. So he got up and he ate and he drank. And the food gave him enough strength to travel 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. Man, sometimes, sometimes we have to understand the difference between rest and renewal. In fact, that's my number one point. If you leave here today and you don't understand, I want you to understand this. Don't confuse rest for renewal. Don't confuse rest for restoration. There is a difference between rest and renewal. There's a difference between you going up and playing video games after a long day at school. There's a difference between you going, sitting on a couch and watching Netflix. There is a difference between you resting your feet than being renewed by the Holy Spirit of God. Do not confuse the two. Do not sit here and say, man, I, all I need is rest. All I need, I'm feeling burnt out, man. I just need to be restful. And then all you do that week is play video games. All you do that week is watch Netflix. All you do that week is catch up on, on I don't know, the latest movie. That is not rest. That is not rest. Notice how Elijah went to sleep first. And an angel came to him. Notice that just because he slept didn't mean he had enough strength to go on the rest of the way. There is a difference between rest and renewal. I'll put it this way. You guys spend 7.5 hours on that phone of yours a day how many of you know just because you give it a rest and put it in your pocket doesn't mean it's charged at some point that phone's going to die and if you forget to plug it in you're going to wake up the next day to an empty and dead cell phone and likewise man a lot of you guys you're sitting here and, and you're claiming to rest you're claiming to rest in God's presence. You're claiming to rest in, God's, God, in God, period. And what you're really doing is you're just putting a phone down. You're not being renewed in his spirit. You're not being recharged in his presence. And then the next day you wake up feeling dead, more disconnected. This past two weeks, I've had the ability to spend some time with my wife at my house. And in December, it always gets crazy for pastors. It really does. There's a lot of events that happen. And my wife, it's her busy season at work, and so we were feeling really, really stressed. 
where you're feeling drained physically, mentally. Even spiritually, we're like, man, I don't know how more we can do this. And Christmas came. That was an interesting day. New Year's came. It was more of a relaxing day. And then I realized when I'm, I'm waking up beside my wife, I looked at her, and I think it was like a Monday. We woke up at like 1 p.m. It's crazy. And I remember looking at her, and I'm like, man, this feels like, this feels like when we first got married. Like, this feels like our honeymoon. And we haven't done anything. We didn't go anywhere. We were just literally in our own bed, like, oh, my God, that felt so great. We feel so rested. But there was a difference between us being able to be on vacation and sleep versus us being in the presence of God, being renewed, being recharged. I looked at my wife, and, and we had been talking about things spiritually and, and, and what was going on, and, and we were talking about what our plans were for, for this new year. And I remember thinking, I was like, man, like, honestly, I just want to grow closer to God and you. Like, that's my heart's desire. There's a difference between going to sleep, feeling tired, feeling like you need a break, and then taking that break and doing everything the world has to offer. And then there's being renewed in spirit, being in the presence of God, eating his food. If you don't know what God's food is, it's God's word. And when you feel burnt out, it's so easy to sit back and just watch TV, play video games, distract yourself from the responsibilities that you're meant to do. But God's desire is that you are renewed in his presence. God's desire is that you take him as your foundation. God's desire is that you start calling him by his name and saying, Lord, I need you now. God's desire is that you stop taking all the responsibilities that you should have, pushing them to the side and saying, yeah, I just need a break. No, you need to be in the presence of God. You need to sit there and be like, Lord, I, I got to stop confusing my responsibilities, my rest for being renewed in the spirit. Well, we go through work, we go through everything we have out and we continue to be stressed again and again and again. But it's time that we start giving that over to God. It's time that we start, stop burning ourselves out. Stop thinking that just because you put your head down, you've rested. You haven't rested. True rest is rest in God's presence and in his spirit. True rest is feeling the burnout and saying, Lord, I can't do this right now. I need to give this over to you. It's not adding more stress into our life. It's not adding more responsibilities onto our life. It's not piling up things and ignoring them. Man, maybe you've gotten to this point. You've gotten burned out because you, you fear disappointment. You might feel disappointment of your parents. Maybe you don't want the rejection of life. Maybe you've gotten to the point of being so stressed out because you don't want to you don't want to disappoint your parents, you don't want to disappoint your pastors, you don't want to disappoint your teachers, whatever the fear is. Whatever it might be, maybe it's school. Maybe it's family, work, sports, whatever has you overly stressed. Man, it's time that we stop living the stressed out life. And it's, start, it's time that we start renewing ourselves in the holiness of God. John 16, says this. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. It doesn't matter the stress that brings upon your life. Whatever the world has to offer you, whatever stress the world has to offer you, can I tell you something? God has defeated that. It's time that we start calling out on his name. It's time that we start finding ourselves in the presence of God. 
it's time that we start making time for us to just be in his word. Man, whatever it is that you got to do this year, your goal shouldn't be, let me lose weight. Your goal shouldn't be, hey, you know what? Let me get into this team. Your goal should be, Lord, how am I going to get closer to you? What am I going to do? I'm tired of going through these cycles of being burnt out again and again and again. I'm tired of being stressed again and again and again. Lord, I need to be able to rest in your presence. So give it to God today. Whatever it is you got to give up, however you've been feeling, doesn't matter that breaking point. If you feel like you've reached it, if you feel like you're getting to that point, man, I want to call you guys up. Stand up. I want an altar call to happen. I want your foundation to be God's foundation. I want you to call upon the Lord and say, Lord, I can't do this anymore without you. I can't sit here and do life without you. Father, I want to be in your presence. Lord, I want heaven to fall down. Lord, I need you to be here with me today because I'm way too stressed. I'm feeling that burn. There has to be a time and a period where we give it up to God. And that time is now. I open up the altar. I want you guys to stand. I want you guys to, to pour out your hearts. I want you guys to get right with God. Let's go.